Hi, I'm going to show you how to use Julia in CoCalc, especially on a compute server, which is a dedicated virtual machine in which it's very easy to run um, terminals and Jupyter notebooks. And also Pluto, which is a notebook server for Julia. Okay, so let me show you. So first here's Julia and it's an amazing compiled language that lets you write extremely high performance code, um, kind of designed from the ground up for that purpose. So let's check out how you can use it on CoCalc. So here I am on the CoCalc landing page. I'm going to click on projects now that I'm signed in. And I have a little demo project right here, which I'll open. And now uh, let me delete this old file. And now I'm going to show you how to use Julia. So first, you can just create a quick uh, Jupyter notebook, and there's a Julia kernel, and you can just directly start using that. So let's use Julia 1.10. Um, supposing you don't know Julia super well, you can use generative AI to write a little snippet of Julia for you to get you going. So let's do that. Um, let's see, how do I... Sum the integers up to 100. Okay, here. All right, so it writes a little Julia program that sums the integers up to 100. Hit Shift Enter, and it will start up the kernel. Wait a second as the kernel starts up, and then we'll have Julia, and it will give us back 5,050, hopefully, and there it is. Excellent. Um, and you can see some little things like this tells you when the cell was run, how long it took to run. Uh, you can also run it again, and it's a lot faster because now the thing is running, and you can see it took just a fraction of a second. It should be extremely fast because it's a compiler um, it doesn't actually do a huge amount of work to compute this sum. It'll use like a formula. So it should be super fast, even if we replace like 100 by um, a billion. Uh, oh, it's a carrot in Julia. Yeah, see how it's just basically instantaneous, no matter what, because it's not actually doing the work. Okay. Um, I'm annoyed that it, it's all kind of wrong. All right, now it's all right. All right, now the question is, how can we do this instead using a compute server, which will uh, let us run Julia, but on uh, dedicated resources that are potentially a lot more powerful than the kind of default shared, relatively slow resources that you have by default in CoCalc. So all you have to do is click on um, server right here, and you can say new compute server, and here you go. There's some templates if you want to try out, try those. Um, there's actually one for Julia right here. Uh, and let's say use this template. Okay, now we're using this Julia template that I made. And it has eight CPUs, 64 gigabytes of memory. It Critically, under image, you need to select Julia so that it will use the Julia image. And um, everything else we can leave pretty much as is. Okay. And notice I have DNS configured, so I'll be able to easily um, use something that's served over the web. Okay, so let's start the server running. This should take about a minute or two for it to fully boot up. Once it's ready, we'll be able to run our Jupyter Notebook. And also, if we want a terminal, um, you can make a Linux terminal easily. So you get a nice Linux terminal. We can switch both of these so that they'll run on the Julia compute server as soon as the compute server finishes booting up. So they'll, they'll stop running in our main project and then start running on the compute server. But we just have to wait for it to go. Um, uh, in the meantime, we can look, if you, uh, Click on settings, there's like that little blue box. It tells you about the Julia compute server image. 
Not too much information, but it just gives you a little bit of basic information about it. So just waiting for it to boot up. Um, notice we do have one click Jupyter in VS Code. Um, there's not a one click Pluto where you can get the Pluto server yet, but that is coming soon. So that's just something I need to add. In any case, let's wait for this to finish booting up. And once it's booted up, we'll be able to um, use it to run Julia. Uh, some advantages to using a compute server is that you have a much, much faster disk than you have with a normal CoCalc project. You can easily expand the disk to be extremely large. Um, 65 terabytes is the limit. Um, you have you know, a lot more memory and dedicated CPUs, and that can really matter. Just installing software into Julia, due to how it does a lot of just-in-time compilation, can take quite a long time. So it's really nice when using Julia to have a lot more CPU and RAM. I mean, in fact, if you're using Julia, you're very likely to care enormously about performance and speed, and so you're not going to want to use just some random uh, shared resources on CoCalc. You're going to want a dedicated VM just to you that is as fast as you need for whatever task you're doing. And with CoCalc compute servers, you get that um, at a very reasonable price. Uh, so you can see it's finishing up with starting up Julia. It's almost there. We just need to wait a little while for this uh, server to complete. And then we'll be able to use Jupyter and terminals and uh, VS Code and Jupyter Lab very easily on our server that's devoted to Julia. And we can also install packages. And we have plenty of horsepower for doing so. Okay, cool, so it finished starting up. And now um, this should be instead running on the compute server because I selected that. So now it's the kernel is connecting and starting up. And also our terminal over here um, has started up and this is running on the compute server. So we have a lot more power. Notice we have 64 gigabytes of memory dedicated to us. We have eight CPUs, and it's just generally a very fast uh, environment that we're working with. Okay. Um, to illustrate installing a package, I think the, the plotting package, which is really kind of big and takes a while to install, I think that's not installed by default on the compute server. So let's, um, again, let's ask generative AI. Uh, we can choose any model we want. So let's choose, I don't know, GPT-4. Um, plot a beautiful spiral. So to do that, it's going to need a package. And um, we'll see that it says using plots. This should fail initially because the plots package, uh, I think, is not installed. We'll see in a second. Um, let's see what happens. Ah, see? Oh, actually, lint space is the thing that fails. So let's see how to fix that. So how do you deal with that? So you just ask it. Um, so it's saying that, in fact, it's suggesting the wrong code, given the version of Julia that we're using. And now it's suggesting using range instead of lint space. Okay, so let's try making that change. Let's see what happens. And, oh, it looks like the plots um, package is already there. And it just drew the, a beautiful spiral, which it labeled beautiful spiral. And indeed, there we are, very nice. Um, let's see. All right, so we're now using the Julia Jupyter kernel, or we can use Julia on the command line in a compute server. Um, it's really nice and powerful. Let's see, how about let's try another thing. Uh, Show me how to run something that is multi-threaded in parallel, uh, multi-threaded in Julia, which really pushes the limits of my eight CPU computer um, to compute something. <laughs> so let's see what it does. Okay, so it's doing an intensive computation. And it looks like it's just some completely random arbitrary trig function thing um, that uses a bunch of threads. And let's see what happens. 
And a nice thing is you can always switch to the terminal, just kind of you know, use top or whatever and um, keep track of what's happening. So you can see that uh, Julia is using lots of CPU and it's probably, well, who knows what it's doing. It's doing intensive computation 80 times. And I think it's hard to see the threads with just um, tops. Let's try H top instead. Doesn't look to me. I'm, I'm dubious that it's using all available eight threads. I think I need to set end threads. So let's see. I do not believe that we're using all the threads. Let's see what this end threads thing does. In case you haven't guessed, I'm not a Julia expert. Ah, it's saying one thread. So how do you, okay. Um, again, I guess illustration. How do I tell Julia to use eight threads? Okay, let's try it out. Hmm, that did not work at all. So it looks like I have to set the environment variable julia num threads to eight. And maybe you have to do that before it starts up. This is just going downhill. Um, so there's actually no good way to set environment variables before startup for a compute server, unfortunately. That's not implemented. Hmm. Is, is there any way to set the number of threads without having to set an on variable before starting Julia? I mean, you could uh, you can modify the. Wow. Really, there's absolutely no way to set the number of threads in Julia. Wow, that's just crazy. Hmm. Wow, it's all stuff you have to set ahead of time. Um, So I would, I think the way to go, if we want to set the number of threads is we need to change the Julia kernel. So Jupyter, um, Jupyter kernel spec list. This shows where all of the kernels are installed and it's uh, scanning the file system and listing them, which is bizarrely slow. Um, don't know why that would not be really, really fast. And I also know that the answer is it's going to be in user local ah, right here. So if we go to this directory, we can edit. And because it's a compute server, we can be sudo and we can edit any file we want. So we can edit this. And in the environment, when it runs the Julia kernel, I'm going to set the number of threads. So Julia num threads. I'll set it to eight. Okay, so I've now changed that. And now I'm going to restart my kernel and it should um, work. Note, when you restart the kernel in CoCalc, it, um, there's a kernel pool. So we have to restart it twice because it's just going to, the first time I restart it, it's just going to use the kernel that was already running with the previous configuration from the kernel pool. So I've now restarted it twice and now let's see what happens when I do end threads. Uh, hmm. Oh, I have to do using base threads. I never have access to this end threads thing. Yes, look, it totally worked. We now have eight threads. Excellent. So to review, by the way, I just edited the kernel directly in user local shared Jupyter kernels Julia. And I now have eight threads by default which is great. And now let's try to run the same code. I'm just gonna copy and run it down here. And um, 
Above when it ran, it took 49 seconds. Let's see what happens now that it has eight threads. So there's still like some overhead for compilation. We can also check in top and see if it's really like appearing to use a lot of threads. I can't tell. Looks like it's, maybe it's finished. Oh, let's try it again. Okay, looking at top. Ooh, look at that. It's definitely using all eight of the threads. So it's really using everything. And um, let's see how long it takes. It takes eight seconds. Whereas the other one took um, like 49 seconds. And that's consistent. I mean, we made it a much, much faster calculation. Okay, so that illustrates just a little bit of using Julia with the compute server on CoCalc. Some other things to note, if you're going to use a GPU, then there are compute servers available which have a GPU. If you click on templates, you'll see that there's lots of uh, GPU examples, like um, there's an A100, an H100, and many other options that involve a GPU. And there's um, a really uh, wide range of powerful VMs that you can choose from. Uh, if you scroll through here, you can see that like, let's say you need a lot of memory. Um, look at that, we can easily get a compute server with 700 and 68 gigabytes of RAM for a dollar an hour, which is just crazy. Um, it, note though, that's a spot instance, so you're getting a massive 86% discount, and you can actually get an even better discount if you run it in Italy. Um, but if you, if you wanna be absolutely guaranteed that the machine isn't going to get killed, then you have to choose a standard instance, and that's significantly more expensive. But for a lot of computations, a spot instance is completely reasonable. In any case, when you're done um, doing your work, you can just turn this off, all your data on the compute server, like any packages you installed or any configuration you did, like our change to the Jupyter kernel will be saved. And you have to pay a little bit for that data while it's stored. Or if you're really completely done with this and um, notice your files that, you, that we made here, like this notebook, these are just in our normal file system. Things are synced back and forth between the compute server and um, CoCalc's normal files. So we have those files. Um, there's one exception to that, which is in each compute server, there's a list of fast local directories that don't get synced back and forth. But they're, you know, it's like compute server 3481. It's like a very special directory. So in any case, I'm just going to uh, deprovision this compute server because I don't need it anymore. I'm completely done with it. And um, um, I don't want to spend anything on it further. Okay, so deprovision it. It's done. Um, the whole calculation, everything I just showed you costs like 20 cents. Um, so it's not very expensive. You get charged by the, the second for usage. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you have fun using and doing really cool research with the Julia um, environment on CoCalc.